Do you love the dancing toothless meme? I do, it is so cute. If you follow this tutorial, you can make one too. I've only used very basic stitches, so it should be quite easy to make. The body is the easiest part to make, and with its arms crocheted in, you can make it dance. The arms, legs and tail get their shape from the crochet stitches we've used. There's no wire inside. One side has a larger stitch than the other side, and that gives its shape, so it'll bounce back naturally. His ears and are they scales? <laughs> All made from magic rings and they're quite easy to sew on. You can add an extra one down the side of the head if you like. The bumps on his head, back and tail are also magic rings. He's so cute. I hope you can make one too. You'll need one 50 gram ball of fine yarn, a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, some scissors, some safety eyes, a needle and some polyfill. This video is step one of making our dancing toothless meme amigurumi and we'll be making the arms and the legs. To start you need to make a magic ring of eight single crochet stitches. If you don't know how to make a magic ring please watch my video called how to make a magic ring that won't come undone. I won't show you every stitch or the video would be way too long but I'll show you any tricky parts we need to work through. When you have your eight stitches, pull your magic ring closed a little, not too tight, and do the first stitches in the next row. The first space has an increase, so you need to put two single crochet stitches in that first space. If you pull the magic ring closed first, it's very difficult to get that increase into that first stitch because it's too tight. So now that we've done that first stitch, tighten your magic ring now, very tight, and then we'll continue with our row. The pattern for round two is increase two single crochet times two, then increase and single crochet, and you'll have 11 stitches at the end of the round. An increase means that you just put two stitches into one space from the round before. We're also going to trap our yarn tail as we crochet around round two, so that means just put your yarn tail around inside the stitches as you go around. I use the loop at the end of my yarn tail to secure the work, you'll see that later. For rounds 3, 4 and 5, we'll just do a single crochet in each space. That means 11 stitches per round. I'm going to miss trapping the tail in this, these next two stitches because there's a bump there and I don't want that to make a bump in my work. Then when I get to the next stitch, I'll put the hook through the centre of that loop and crochet that in. That will anchor the work so it doesn't come undone. When you get to the end of the round, turn your work in so that the part that's facing you is on the outside and massage it a little so that the stitches aren't going to stretch as you crochet. Otherwise you could get some gaps in your work and you'll be able to see the fibre fill through the gaps. Keep track of your rounds by moving that yarn marker each time you get to the end of the round. From here on, if the instructions are the same for other rows, I'll skip forward to the next change. So here's round six and it's going to be five single crochet, five half double crochet and a single crochet with 11 stitches. That will start the shaping for the elbow and we'll continue that in the next few rounds. Round seven has a decrease, single crochet, decrease, four half double crochet, two single crochet and that's nine stitches. To make a decrease go into the front of the next two stitches and crochet them together. I'll show you all the steps in this round because it's a little unusual. So we just did a decrease, now it's a single crochet. Then the next stitch is a decrease again, so go into the fronts of the next two stitches and crochet them together in a single crochet stitch. Then we're going to do four half double crochet stitches. So wrap the yarn around your hook, pass it through the next space, pull through some yarn and then pull through all three loops on your hook. We're going to do four of those. So here's the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one. After that there are two single crochet stitches, one in each space. Next is round eight, and it's a decrease, single crochet, four half double crochet, and a decrease. There will be seven stitches at the end of this round. So put your hook through the front of the first stitch, the front of the second stitch and crochet them together with a single crochet stitch. Then a single crochet in the next stitch. 
There'll be four half double crochets now, one in each stitch for the next four stitches. So there's the second one. And the third one. And the fourth one. And we end this row with a decrease. So going to the front of each of the next two stitches and crochet them together with a single crochet stitch. Round nine is the last round for this leg and it's going to be two single crochets, four half double crochets and one single crochet. So seven stitches at the end of this round. So there's our first single crochet. And the second one, the space is getting smaller so it's a bit difficult to do. Then we'll do four half double crochets. There's one. Two. Three. And four. Four. here it comes and the last stitch is a single crochet stitch and then I pull out the row marker and do one single slip stitch then we'll cut off a yarn tail it doesn't need to be very long because this one will be worked into our work. And then do an invisible end there. So go into the next stitch from the one that it's coming out of, go through both the front and back, sorry that went off the screen, through the front and back of that stitch in front of it. If it's too tight there you can squeeze it open a bit by the end of your crochet hook. Then you go back into the loop that the yarn came out of. It's a bit difficult to see with this dark yarn. And then you also need to go into the loop immediately below it, but because it's so hard to see, I'll do them in two steps. So the top one's done. Now the one underneath is actually the back part of the loop from the row before. So that'll just pull it down and make it all look nice and even. Now you can fill it with some fiber fill. It needs to be filled firmly, but not so firmly that those half double crochet stitches come open and you can see the yarn through. Also, you should be able to bend it to get that elbow working well. So there's one arm done. You'll need to make another for the other side. Next, I'll show you how to make the legs. We'll start with a magic ring of eight single crochet stitches. And don't forget to have a loop on the end of your yarn to anchor it later. Remember to do the first round a little loosely so that you'll be able to crochet into it when you've finished your eight stitches. So I'll speed up some of these by skipping the bits in the middle. Here we are on the eighth stitch and we're going to tighten it a little, just enough so that you can reach the next stitch and the next stitch will have an increase in it. After you've done that increase, which is two single crochets in the same space, tighten your yarn tail. The pattern for this round is increase single crochet times four. You've already done your first increase, so the next stitch is a single crochet. There'll be 12 stitches at the end of the round. So keep following that pattern, increase single crochet until you get to the end of the round. Put a line marker in at the start of this round so you don't get lost. The stitches will tend to cup towards you as we crochet and that's fine, we'll turn it in the right way later. So for this round we need to have three single crochets, five half double crochets and four single crochets. When you get to the end of the round remember to move your row marker. For round four we'll do three single crochet, six half double crochet and three single crochet. Here's the last stitch in round four. Now we're going to turn our work in the right way. So the way that's facing you is the right way. So we'll turn it in that way and we'll massage it a little so that the stitches will all go in nice and evenly and not stretch. Remember to move your round marker and in row five we'll do four single crochet, five half double crochet and three single crochet. 
Move your round marker again and in round six we'll do four single crochet, six half double crochet and two single crochet. There's 12 stitches in the round. Move your round marker again. It is very important that you keep up with your rounds. This time we'll have five single crochet, five half double crochet and two single crochet. Again there's 12 stitches in the round. At the end of the round move the row marker again and this time there'll be five single crochet, six half double crochet and one single crochet. 12 stitches in all. This is the last round, round nine, and you still need to move that row marker. So we'll have six single crochet, five half double crochet and one single crochet. That round marker not only helps you to know when to end the round, it'll help you to know whether you've missed a stitch if you're counting your stitches. At the end of the round do a slip stitch and then we'll pull off a long yarn tail and do an invisible end. That long yarn tail will be used to sew the legs onto the body. Put your needle through the space one step away from where the yarn came through. Go through both the front and back of that loop and then pull your yarn to be the same size as the stitches you've made. Then go into the loop that the yarn came through and what would have been the back loop of the row before and pull the yarn through. If you've done it neatly it should be roughly the same size as all the other stitches. Fill the leg with some fibre fill and you can use the back of your crochet hook to help stuff that. Stretch and shape the legs so that it looks the same as the dancing toothless meme dragon's legs. In the next video I'll show you how to make the body and how to attach the arms. Thanks for watching.